Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome back to another little vlog. It's been a few months since I posted a life update on here and we're also coming up on six months since we moved to London, which is weird because in many ways it feels like we just got here last week. We are about to take Odie to the park and then I think we're gonna walk around, get some lunch, maybe go to a museum. So I thought I would just take you along for the day. And then at some point I wanna sit down and chat, maybe answer a few moving questions that I've gotten since we've been here. Just give like a proper life update because I feel like a lot has changed. I have new thoughts and opinions. Okay, well, let's go. Let's get out there team. <laughs> ended up walking around the park playing frisbee of course we haven't had a lot of hot days yet but we're definitely getting more into summer we are seeing the sun now we stopped at an ice cream truck and shared a cone which Odie thinks is the single best thing ever he will actually get upset sometimes if we pass an ice cream truck without buying any Then we took the train over to Tower Bridge. You can actually go up into the towers. There's a small museum that talks about the history and the construction of the bridge. And the walkway between the towers has some pretty views of the river and then these glass bottom sections you can walk across. We did get lunch in a cafe and I forgot to take a clip of our food before we ate it all. So that's my bad. Okay, it is a new day. We're home right now. I'm doing a little bit of crafting. I found these cool keys on Etsy. They look like little magical skeleton keys and I wanted to turn it into a magical flying key. So I embroidered this mossy hoop, which took forever. And then I have some monarch butterfly wings that I'm working on that I used wire for so I can cut them out and then attach them to the key so it looks like a little magical butterfly key. That's what I'll be working on because I don't know what to do with my hands. You could just hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. I asked you guys on Instagram to submit any questions that you had for me about London or any topics that we could chat about. And I did get some good responses so we can get into those now. Number one is how are you feeling now? I hope you're adjusting better, lots of love. Uh, thank you for that, that's very sweet. I I am doing much better now. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable. Life has kind of calmed down now that we've been in this flat for a bit, kind of settled more into a new routine. I know my way around the neighborhood. I'm using the tube easier. I know how to find things in the grocery store now. Yeah, just like all the mundane life things that come with time and repetition. Everything doesn't feel as new and scary as it did five, six months ago. I'd say overall things are good. We spend a lot of time in the park with Odie. I kind of keep a running list on my phone of London sites and things that we want to explore. So on the weekends when we're free, we just kind of like pick something and go check out a new part of the city. Most of it is like gardens, museums, cafes, markets, that sort of thing. But I think we're having fun now exploring the city and we're starting to really enjoy being here. It was a little rough going. I'll admit at first, I, I really struggled those first few months with the change, but it's getting easier the more that we're here. I'm also just in a better headspace myself as far as just accepting that everything's not gonna be perfect and I'm gonna make mistakes and things are gonna go wrong and that's okay. That's just part of it. Uh, these next two questions I put together one, do you miss the US? And two, do you prefer it to Florida? I dream of moving abroad. I miss certain things about it for sure. There's certain places and food that I miss. I have not had iced tea in six months, which Patrick and I are both from the South and are used to drinking quite a bit of sweet tea, which is not something that's readily available here. It might even be considered blasphemy. And I do know that I can make it myself at home. It's literally just two ingredients, but it's just not the same as going into any standalone restaurant and leaving with an iced tea the size and weight of a small child. How is this a child size soda? Well, it's roughly the size of a two year old child if the child were liquefied. I don't necessarily miss where we lived. Like I physically, I do not miss living in Florida, but I miss certain comforts about our previous life. We were closer to family and friends. We certainly made more money collectively between us. So that just kind of inherently made life easier. I do miss some of our stuff. Like I miss, 
having more space, a bigger apartment. I miss our full size washer and dryer. I used to only have to do laundry once a week and now we do laundry every single day here because our washer is teeny tiny. I miss free refills at restaurants and Mexican food with giant portions of beans and rice. Uh, these two questions I combined together Anything you were stressed that you'd miss that didn't turn out to be a big deal? And how is your food shopping going? I was stressed about grocery shopping and like finding a grocery store here that we liked as much as our US stores, which if you're unfamiliar, grocery stores in America are like a cultural expression of freedom, liberty, glutton and capitalism. <laughs> I love those memes that are like, the European mind can't comprehend. And then it's a photo of just like a Chili's in a giant parking lot. Red, white, blue, mother these colors don't run. <laughs> the European mind can't comprehend a Southern Publix the day before the Super Bowl. God bless our troops. God bless America and gentlemen. The amount of variety that you find in American grocery stores is just like on another level than it is here. Instead of having two full aisles full of cereal boxes to choose from, it's like a section of one aisle. Is there boxes out there? You tell them, bud. And then it's just, it's kind of similar across the board, like soap, paper products, whatever. It's like, here are the three brands for your timely consideration. See, you saw them out there? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Initially, this kind of shocked me, but you really just adapt. And the longer that we're here, the more of a non-issue it is. We found a routine with our shopping. We also get like half of our groceries delivered now, which has significantly reduced the amount of trips that I have to make to the store each week. And sometimes it's actually kind of nice not being constantly overwhelmed by options. Next question, what's the oddest thing that you wouldn't find in America? Example, most produce package in the UK. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of packaging is actually actually cigarettes. Cigarette cartons here are packaged with very graphic images of premature babies, blackened organs, mangled limbs, very ominous, very off-putting, and you don't see that in America. Cigarettes are still marketed there with Excuse me. Cigarettes there are still marketed with very colorful branding and logos, not unlike Pepsi Cola. Something that's different here too is the portions of things. The portions are typically smaller here. So for instance, Oreos come in a singular sleeve of Oreos versus like a briefcase of Oreos. It's also interesting to see international brands here like Kellogg's will have the exact same packaging, but the product will be called something a little bit different, like Frosted Flakes, for instance. Same cereal, same brand, same Tony the Tiger, but they're called Frosties here. Or Cinnamon Toast Crunch is called Curiously Cinnamon here, which is arguably way more British sounding. The next two questions, how are you adjusting to public transportation and do you miss driving? Uh, I'll start by saying that I love trains. I think that trains are the superior elite mode of transportation. I have not driven a car in six months, which is really weird considering I've driven a car almost every day since I was 15. The US is just a very car centric country. Most people have a car, everybody drives. Things are very spread out geographically in the US and most cities don't have public transportation in a way that is convenient, reliable, efficient, etc. I do miss the convenience of driving sometimes, like just being able to go to the store and knowing I can load up my car with whatever I buy. And also maybe the solitude of traveling by myself in my own little air conditioned bubble and not pressed up against some young gentleman with BO. However, I do not miss the maintenance of owning a car, the loan, insurance, oil changes, gas, tire pressure, like none of that. I also also don't miss driving itself. I have never liked driving. It stresses me out. I like being a passenger princess. Also, I don't like sitting in traffic. There's pros and cons with having a car just like there is with public transportation. But I do think the public transportation here is really neat. It's convenient. It's efficient. I like that I can just play games on my phone and not 
have to worry about driving or finding a parking spot. It did take me a few weeks to like get my bearings and kind of understand how the trains worked, what direction I needed to go, what platform I needed to be on, all of that. Obviously the maps on my phone were a big help with that, but it did still take adjusting to. But for the most part, I like it. I like that we can just hop on a train or the bus and get to where we want to be. We, You don't have to have a car here. The cons are definitely there. Is it the cleanest thing in the world? No. Does it suck when it's a hot day and it's rush hour and people are packed in there like sardines and sweaty and smelly and breathing each other's air? Yeah. And I have had a couple occasions where I've had to get off a train early because somebody was being weird or making me feel unsafe. Also something like I didn't fully realize or account for when we moved here was just how long it would take to get places in the city. For instance, something that's only five miles away geographically on a map might take me 45 minutes to get there. I mentioned this in a previous video and there were some people in the comments being like, uh, that train ride should only take you 15 minutes, you freaking idiot. And I'm like, yeah, but it takes me 15 minutes to walk to the station that I need, then 15, 20 minutes on the train, and then another 15 minutes to walk to where I need to be after the station. Like door to door, it takes a hot minute. And coming from the perspective of an American who's used to driving, it's just different. But after using it, I do wish that the US had more trains. Even just like state trains that went in between major cities would be such a game changer. The next question is, how are you adjusting to the weather? I'm UK born and bread and rain still gets me down. I think maybe it's just human nature to want what you don't have. Because to me, uh, like Florida weather is swampy, uninhabitable hellscape. But when I mention to people here that I'm from Florida, the normal reaction is to kind of be like, and you came to this weather alternatively. But because of that, I am loving the weather here. I hate being hot. It is July and I can still wear long sleeves and be comfortable. Meanwhile, summer back in the South means that it's 100 degrees every day for seven months. I'm not super bothered by rain. Um, the only time it's really been a hassle was in the winter when it's freezing and raining and my dog needs to go outside. What has bothered me more than the rain has been the like a daylight discrepancy because England is so much farther north than where we were living in the US. The daylight slash daylight savings phenomenon is super different. When we got here in January, it was winter and the sun would set every day by 4 p.m. And then it's pitch dark by 4.30, which was so weird and really messes with your brain chemistry. And now that it's summer, we have that same problem just in the opposite direction. So the sun doesn't set here until like 10 p.m. I'm getting into bed some nights and it's still bright as day outside. What the hell? Next question is, are you missing the craft stores? I'm in the UK and I'm jealous of all the options in the US. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Add this to the list about what I miss about the US question. I really miss Michael's and Joanne's. I lived like 10 minutes away from a Joanne's previously. And so I could go anytime I wanted. And I wanted often. I visited Hobbycraft here, which is I think the equivalent craft store here in the UK, but I do not live close to one. So it's like a whole ass event to go there. I need a full afternoon. So for that reason, I've only been once in the past six months. I have been ordering my art supplies online which I don't really care for. I don't like to do that. I'd much rather see stuff and pick things out in person. I'm definitely open to visiting more specialty, smaller art shops. Um, I just, I just haven't found them yet. Next question, have you found your pastry spot yet? This is a really sweet question. We have two bakeries that we frequent now. Both of them are French. So sorry, England, but the French really do be making some fine tasty bread. One of them makes these chocolate twist pastries, or I think in French it's called like a uh, toussade au chocolat. Torsade au chocolat. Which is like a flaky pastry filled with custard and chocolate and it's twisted. New to me, never had one before living here, but now it's my favorite pastry. And the other bakery makes these really fluffy cremique brioche breads that they fill with raisins, apricots, or chocolate. And it's so, so good. I get the chocolate one. What do you like about England the most? Been to any castles yet or not your cup of tea? The thing I like most about being here, and you can correct me if this is an England thing or more just like a Europe thing, but 
there is a lot more consideration for public spaces. Like living in a city that's actually designed to let people walk, let people be outside walking, commuting, dining together. There's museums everywhere, there's art galleries. The public parks here have been fantastic to us. Big open spaces with walking trails to walk, picnic, be with your dog. They have running water, they have gardens. Like they're just really lovely. They're spaces that feel so necessary, especially living in a big city. And we did not have public parks or public spaces like this in the US in the same way. The US has state parks and national parks that are really top tier, excellent. But unless you live near one and are willing to pay uh, for entry, it's just not super accessible to everybody day to day. The public parks that we had near us were very small and usually just consisted of a crappy children's playground and then a fenced in football or baseball field. Not really usable space for people to just exist and relax being outside. So I think that's been my favorite thing. We spend way more time outside now. As far as castles, we have been to some of the royal palaces like um, Kensington, Buckingham, we did go to Windsor, but I would love to go see an old medieval Game of Thrones-esque type castle. If you have any recommend for a day trip or a weekend trip, let me know. I would love to wear a corseted dress and frolic around the courtyard until I pass out. Any weird culture shock things about the UK that you're getting used to? I would say probably the main thing, honestly, has just been the lifestyle change. The first few months we were here, we were starving all the the time. One, I mean, mostly because we're more active here. We can see on our phones that we're walking three to four times as much as we would be this time last year, which also means we're burning three times as many calories as we were used to. And then the food is also different here. I talked about portion size being smaller. I was irritable for probably two to three months when we first got here from sugar withdrawal. Not in the sense of like, oh, they don't have dessert and cake and cookies here because they absolutely do. But there's a lot of sugar and processed shit in American food that you just don't even really think about, to be honest. Even in rice, meat, granola, I don't know, like things that you wouldn't expect to have sugar. Hey, maybe it tastes so good because it's actually full of sugar. And then that paired with my refillable sugar water made for a person whose body was in for quite a shock when she got here. Now it's fine. We have sweets when we want them, but there was definitely an adjustment period where my body was like, hey, what the hell? Next question, how is Odie adjusting to city pup life? He is doing great actually. He has adjusted better than I ever thought he would. He knows the park, he knows his way around our neighborhood, he's got his walking paths down that he likes to take, he knows where all the good frisbee playing fields are. We meet lots of other sausage dogs in the park. He'd actually never used an elevator before we got here and now He's riding the elevator like a champ. He rides the bus and the train with us. Although like those are more reluctant. He does not really care for the bus or the train, but he's been a really good boy. And he actually gets way more exercise and playtime here in the city than he ever did. So I think he's happy. Next question, did you find a job? The short answer, no. <laughs> the job market is horrendous right now. I have applied to hundreds of jobs in varying industries. I've updated my resume a dozen times over. I've done all the personalized cover letters. I've used every job site, career page, temp agency, and I've got nothing to show for it. I did end up getting a part-time job that's just a hourly minimum wage, like retail type situation, which um, is, is not great, but I don't know. I'm just trying to stay positive. At least it's something. It kind of forces me to get out of the house and talk to other people. It's it's earning a little bit of money and hopefully it won't be forever and eventually something else will come along. This next question is kind of random out of left field, but it's, will you make a books recommendation video? I assume this question was asked because I talked about some books that I had enjoyed in a previous video. It is so sweet that you would be interested in that you might be the only one, bless your sweet little heart. I love talking about books and hearing recommendations from other people. I feel like most everything that I read is because I saw somebody else talking about it online. I don't know if I'd make a whole video about it, to be honest, because 
At the moment, my literary consumption has drastically diminished. I have big beef with the library app Libby. I was a Libby stan. That was my girl, my ride or die app till the end. I used it every day because I am an audiobook goyle. And our library in Florida had a really big selection of audiobooks. So I could find just about anything that I was interested in reading for free. You just had to wait in line to borrow it, right? Well, somehow Libby or probably even the library where we used to live caught on to the fact that we don't live there anymore and freaking revoked our library cards. So now I don't have access to my books anymore. We did sign up for the library here in our new county, but their selection of audiobooks is garbage. They have nothing. So now I can't listen to my stories. Spotify has some audiobooks on there now, but you only get 15 hours of audiobook listening time per month, which is only like one book if you're lucky. Libby, how could you do this to me? I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. And the last question I got was, any trips planned outside of London? So one of the draws to us moving here actually was the opportunity to be able to travel Europe cheaper and faster. And that was originally the idea, but unfortunately into little surprise, I am emotionally attached and dependent on my dog in a way that should be studied by neurologists. I need him in a way that was not intended when our ancestors domesticated that dingo. It's also very difficult to travel with pets in and out of the UK because they're not allowed on flights or in the, the Eurostar, like the train that is the high-speed train that goes from the UK into the rest of Europe. And I cannot leave my baby with a stranger. I mean, look at him. I'm a little baby. I'm a baby, I have no money. Until we make some friends a friend that I can truly trust to leave him with. I think all of our travels are kind of gonna be strictly within the UK so that he can come with us, which is really fine for now. I mean, there's so much here for us to see and do. He can travel on the trains domestically within the UK. There's some weekend trips that we wanna do. I think next year we really wanna to go to Scotland and maybe spend a week there. In the fall, we're gonna spend a couple days in the Cotswolds, which is like quintessential English village countryside. It is stunning. I'm very excited for that. And last month in June, we actually spent a few days in Bath, England for Patrick's birthday. I did film some clips of that trip, but I felt like it wasn't enough footage to put into a video of its own. So I think I'm gonna end this vlog with some of those clips from that trip. But thank you to everybody who asked questions or has sent me advice or well wishes since we got here. I really appreciate it. Most of you guys who watch my channel and interact with me are sweet baby angels. We love you. Thanks for being here and enjoy these clips from Bath. Oh, one more thing. Nobody asked this question, but I'm gonna pretend like you did, which is I wanted to give an update on how our foxes are doing out in the garden. The fox that we were referring to as Fantastic Mr. Fox is actually a lady fox. She had three fox pups back Back in, I think we first saw them in April, maybe? They were so cute. And in just a couple months, they've grown into big angsty teenagers who fight and bite all day back there. I do definitely see now why people think foxes are a menace. They are loud. They cry and scream at each other through the night. Every single night they go through the dumpsters and the trash cans and make a huge mess out there. They dig holes, they chase stray cats. So I definitely get it why people don't like them, but I still think they are the prettiest, most magical little creatures. I love seeing them every day. They're definitely have turned into my like favorite happy animal. Okay, that's it, back to the clips. train from London to Bath. The ride was about an hour and a half. Odie was a bit stressed. You can see him panting here. He does not like traveling at high speeds. He thinks it's unnatural. Once we got out of the city, the view changed into countrysides, farming fields, which was lovely. We saw lots of sheep and cows. A lot of the architecture in Bath is this Georgian era, yellowed stone facade, stone walkways. It's really pretty. It feels like you should be in another time, truly. We rented a pet-friendly Airbnb that I thought I'd show because it was really cute. It had a living room with a fireplace, dining area with a pink kitchen that was super fun. The host had a box of dog toys, which Odie 
immediately found and made himself comfortable. Here's the bedroom, which was also very cozy, but the main reason I booked this place was the private garden space in the back. I mean, come on, look at this place. The roses, the string lights, the garden shed. Look at my boy, look at my little boy in the grass. If this was my backyard, I would simply stare at it all day. We finished out this first day with a walk through the park. There was a botanical garden. We went to a cider house. It was just lovely. The next day we did some of the more touristy sites. I thought this shop window was really cute. It had all these novelty teapots shaped like ovens, sewing machines, toasters, toilets. They had Alice in Wonderland sets and Paddington Bear and Peter Rabbit merch. The legendary dancing bean, I mean, say less. We went to the Roman Baths. This is a genuine bathhouse from when the Romans occupied Britain. This is so old, it's hard to comprehend that it still exists. This was a really cool museum. The self audio guide was fantastic. It had different soundscapes for each room, made it feel more immersive. Then we went into Bath Abbey. I like art history, so I love Gothic architecture, stained glass windows. Humans used to build a stuff that looked like this. That blows my mind. Then we just walked around the city, looked at some shops, saw the sights. It rained on us a little bit, but it's still pretty in the rain. We walked around this famous circle of buildings and I saw this basement flat with at least a dozen creepy dolls in the window. So one can only assume that some harrowing Annabelle Chucky shit is happening down there. What else? We saw the Jane Austen Center and I had hands down the best cinnamon roll that I've ever had in my entire life. The next day we took a train into a neighboring town called Bradford-on-Avon. I found this manor online, this estate near here that you can visit. We intended on getting a cab from the town to the estate, but the cabs were cash only and we didn't have any cash. So we ended up walking the two and a half miles to this house. And the walk was literally through the countryside, through the woods, the sheep fields. Odie had the absolute time of his life. We made it to the house and this thing was gorgeous. It's called Eiford Manor. It's a private residence, I think technically, but you can stay here. They have a cafe, gardens you can visit, and you will see why. This was the prettiest home I have ever seen. It was the secret garden. And then on our last day in Bath, we went to Pryor Park, which has this stunning stone bridge that I really wanted to see. It's very much Pride and Prejudice vibes, living my Jane Austen fantasy. Again, we just walked around, enjoyed the scenery. That's kind of what we like to do. But yeah, that was pretty much our trip. We had a great time. I can't wait to do more trips like this around England. Thank you again for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.